Hi, Alicia. So thank you very much for coming with and joining us on Discover Energy Work today. Um, how are you doing? You've just come out of lockdown, I understand. Yes, doing good, really good. It's an right. interesting time. Yeah, so um, I interviewed, uh, obviously I've interviewed your, your sister, Shoshana, who convinced me, like, with a few words, she just said, like, oh, you wouldn't believe the story my sister has to tell. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, what, what, yeah, exactly. That, that's what I, I mean, I felt different. I mean, I felt, wow, I'm like really excited, especially as you have a background in Chinese medicine, don't you? Or how did that happen? How did you, you're a, um, a Jewish lady and you have a similar background to Shoshana, yeah? And, and you've, and like a lot of people, yeah, you're interested in, in this different approach to, to medicine, but was there, is there, a, is the story, uh, you know, is the story about how you uh, uh, connected to um, uh, Chinese medicine, is that the story or what, what happened? Well, you know, the funny thing is I am a Jewish woman storyteller, actually, that is my biggest, my biggest shtick, but um, the funniest thing is my, my story into acupuncture is absolutely related to my sister. When she was, I'm going to say seven, I might be wrong. It might have been a little bit older. Maybe she was a little older. She got shingles, which is um, herpes zoster, which yes. is very, very rare for a child. And she was exactly. in- Exactly. It's a chicken pox virus, isn't it? But it's just very on the dermatome, isn't it? The dermatomal chickenpox, yeah, and uh, she she was in unbelievable pain, and you know our relationship was such that I I was doing a lot of caretaking of her, and and I really thought of her, you know, little girls get messed up. She was like sort of like my child and my sister, which is odd, but mm. but I was very upset by this. She was in pain. I mean, she would like knock her head against the wall because she was just in pain, and nothing. She's your all- younger sister, yeah. She is. So she was seven, and how old were you then? I was probably around 10. Right. She was a seven or three years difference. Um, And at some point in that, and I can't tell you how long, if it was a week or two weeks, um, my mom came home and and someone had given her a referral to an acupuncturist. And I was crying. I said, don't go stick needles in her, please. I was so upset about them taking her to this. She hadn't eaten in I don't know how long. She wasn't able to drink. She was in total pain. She went to this appointment. She came back, sat at the kitchen table, and ate a full meal. And she wasn't in pain anymore. It was done. Like one treatment and done. Wow. Well, I mean, I wow. Yeah. I I mean, said, people oh, don't know I'm... how painful it is. Like herpes zoster is super, super. I mean, chicken box is pretty terrible, but herpes zoster is. Yeah. Well, exactly. And so... I asked for my parents for acupuncture and they said, you don't need acupuncture, which actually was completely wrong. I needed it more than anyone would ever know. But, um, but that was the little bug that never left my head. And, um, you know, I would go through all of these like, machinations of every, God, I can't tell you how many different things I tried. And um, yeah, I was about to get married and we were going to have, kids and um that was the whole thing it was coming right up i was working how, how for, old were you like i was you were 10 a minute ago so i'm just trying yeah, to catch up 27 yeah okay. 27 27 and this was during the dot-com boom that happened in the okay. united states and i was in the epicenter i was in seattle and i was a project manager for this this really cool company that was creating um this the very first online healthcare system for alternative healthcare practitioners. Oh, wow. This woman was in a terrible accident, and her uh, acupuncturist and chiropractor, massage therapist, are, are who got her through this awful accident, and they mm. could never get paid. And she she made it her life's mission to make sure that these people that were serving and doing the most work for people could actually get paid. So here I am. I'm the website creator, that, not like the technical, but the writer. I was writing the content. And I met the board of directors of this company. And one of them was this white guy who was doing acupuncture. And 
I didn't know white people could do acupuncture. I'd never met a white acupuncture. <laughs> Yeah. I'd had acupuncture. It had always been from Chinese people. I just didn't know that was a thing. So um, I went and I had a session with him. And I want to tell you about this because this was the craziest thing that's ever happened to me. And I, I don't, I never asked him if he did this to other people, but he felt my pulses and uh, for a very long time. And he looked at my face and he said, you better fix your shit or you're going to get really sick. And then left. And I'm laying there on the table and I'm like, hello, <laughs> do I do something? <laughs> and he came back like 20 minutes later, put a few needles in for a second and then said, okay, I'll see you next week. And I sat up and I said, what did that mean? And he said, um, come back next week. Well, I ended up seeing this man for two years, right? And um, I'm about to get married. And I mean, I think in like two weeks time, I'm about to get married and have babies and this whole thing. And I was having a session with him and he said, you know, you're supposed to be doing this. And I said, what? And at this point I already had two master's degrees. I said, I, I, I definitely am not going back to school. He said, I don't know, Elisha, I've been doing this for 25 years and no one has ever asked me the kind of questions you're asking me. Nobody has ever been interested in this medicine. Like you're interested in this medicine. You're supposed to be doing this. Right. I've never been more sure of anything. And I said, no. And I went home and I made dinner and my fiance came home and I said, Hey, you know, what would you think if I, I don't know, instead of getting pregnant, went back to school for just a few years. He said, for what? And I said, acupuncture. And he said, acupuncture. He said, when did you start thinking about that? And I said, I, maybe forever ago. And it just kind of hit me that I'd always wanted to do this, you know, from the time that Shosh got healed by acupuncture. Um, wow. And that is the story. But actually, the more fun story is three years later when um, it's the last weekend of my acupuncture program. I have passed my board exams mm. for not being able to practice nationally. And I've cracked and I've, um, I finished my exams at school and it was a very, very challenging program for me. I'm highly dyslexic and um, the way that they make you learn. And I had to learn Chinese. I had to read and translate Chinese. And um, that was just very, very difficult for me. Yes. Not to mention yin and yang. You're like, you know, when you're dyslexic, it's really challenging to get those set. So I just had to create these whole new brain patterns. But we were just about done. And we were graduating the next weekend. As the, it was the last class. And the president of the school said, I'm really sorry to tell you this. There's a class we forgot to give you. You need to come this weekend. And I said, sorry, yeah, I'm done. And he said, well, you're not going to graduate if you don't come this weekend. If I put it that, and I was like, Oh, so anyway, I begrudgingly went to this class and I was sitting there and I was just doodling. I wasn't listening. And all of a sudden this woman says, and I swear I'm quoting because it's, it is like completely um, in my brain. She said, so these points are points that lie on the body, but they treat our extraordinary vessels, treat these points that, that um, these channels that lie off the body. And I said, what? You know, I just didn't even listen. And she looked at me and I said, can you say that again? She said, yeah, these points are on the body, but they treat the channels that aren't on the body. And I said, are you telling me that we can access auric fields through acupuncture? And she said, what? No, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that <laughs> these points on the body can access channels that don't lie on the body. And I said, don't lie on our body, like they're in our auric field. And it was like, in that moment, it, it almost would have hurt if I was thinking of it that way. Everything I had learned over that past three years just dumped and this whole new gate just opened. And, um, and I just, the, the medicine changed in that moment. And, and it could only have been in that moment because if I had had that information prior to passing all these exams, I never would have been able to finish because I mean, that, that 
you know, and I, I've actually been able to reconcile some of that information again over the years by taking classes, but it's come back through the, through the vise of, of how I'm actually practicing now, which is, which is not how I learned. Would you say that was like, um, I'll say like a gateway moment or a, like um, uh, opening to another level? Moment? I would now. I wouldn't have then. Hmm. Yeah. So, so did you feel from that moment you started seeing things from a different perspective? Oh, 100%. In terms of the medicine, and you know, if I'm, I, I have no idea if I'm right. I'm, I'm going to say I'm making this up, though I don't think that I am. I think this is probably how I practice acupuncture is much closer to how it actually was when this was an energy medicine back before, you know, Mal destroyed it and turned it into what it is now. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about the, the history. I know that my teacher, uh, Lu Jintuan, um, he perceived the uh, energy acupuncture points directly. And he said, but you can apply it to a room. You just let it's called feng shui. Yeah? Or you apply it to heaven. And you say that point over there. That's where some things like gathering and, and spinning, well, it's called a planet, yeah? Um, or, or a star or something else. So it's just, it's all, everything's chi. So, you know, it's acupuncture is the way this, this flow, like any flow, goes, goes up. And then at some point, gets hot and it needs to go down and up and spins and so on. So for me, I mean, like he, he always said, yeah, I'm doing the original acupuncture. This is, this is obviously people didn't, you know, see, well, probably they probably did see lines on the body. They probably did literally see. Yeah. They saw it you know, they can, they have done studies where they put electromagnetic dye into the channels and, and you can actually physically see the acupuncture channels. It's incredible. This is, you know, these were mavericks that created this. These were the, the true avatars that began mm. this medicine. Mm. Oh, wow. and, and I feel very, very lucky, lucky to even just be a smidgen, like a little speck of dust in their oh. environment. A little keep, acupuncture point. I'm a little tiny acupuncture point. <laughs> You know, I would say my favorite thing, truthfully, that happened with this coronavirus, and I have lots to say about coronavirus and, oh, and good. why it's here, but, but, but I really uh, have had time that I've never given myself since, I've, since I graduated from acupuncture school, really, to study. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I love it. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I graduated acupuncture school in 2004. It's now 2020, so that's 16 years of practice. And Mm. And now from, from 16 years of practice, I'm reading and I'm, I, oh God, the rabbit hole. And, you know, I have friends that are going down these rabbit holes of conspiracy theory and all this stuff, you know, like, and, mm. and, and that's mm. fine for them. But I've been down this rabbit hole of getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the intricacies of Chinese medicine. In fact, I have this, I'm sitting on this book right here. I just bought this book and I, um, Every day, I'm just, it's going to take me a year to get through it, but it's incredible. And I mean, I'm like, how do I not know this? Right, so, right. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, isn't that learning though? You know, sometimes yeah. isn't it just like you go, yeah, that's totally obvious. And how did I ignore it? Or how did I hear it a thousand times and not, not hear it a thousand times? That's the thing is that I've never heard this. And there's a picture at the beginning of my acupuncture book, you know, of the one that I studied from. Yeah. They have different pictures that show where the different vessels for each of these channels are. And, and I remember when I heard this thing, it's called divergent channels. I remember there was always a page that said divergent channels, but we didn't ever talk about it. I've never heard about it. Hmm. And, um, and now I'm like, this is the thing I'm supposed to do. This is the thing. Like I'm finally, like each time I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the thing that's my thing. And, and this is my thing. And so I'm, I, it's like I'm almost, I've got my future like sitting right here underneath this computer right now. I'm so excited. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, all, we almost want to get like a little photo of, of under the computer so we can, we can see your future. Um, I, I, wanted, I want to go back because you said something which really intrigued me. You said, um, like when I was 10, I really needed acupuncture probably like so, so badly. Uh, can you 
do you, I mean, I, I don't want to pry too deeply, but what was going no. on that you felt at that time that you, you were the well, one that really I, needed acupuncture? I had a, a, just a terrible digestion since I was a little kid. I had mm. irritable bowel syndrome very, very young mm. and I was poked and prodded and medicated and, mm. but you know, we didn't know just like a lot of the parents that come in, just as a lot of the adults that come in today don't know the, the scope of what acupuncture and Chinese medicine can actually heal. So I would have saved myself 25 years of damage to my intestines. Uh, if yeah. My parents had taken me to acupuncture back then. But, yes. you know, also, this is why I'm so good at treating digestive issues, because I know them intimately. And so mm. you know, who knows what's right, what's wrong. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. So uh, would, would you say that the, the first moment you really came in touch with the energy, as it were, was that, that gateway moment? Or did you feel energy before then? Just, you know, we're on, um, it, it doesn't matter. I think energy is what people think energy is, but it's we discover energy work. So if like there was a moment where you went, oh, there's something else going on. Have you had any like initial energy experiences? Well, I, I did. Uh, and I don't know that I would have called them that. You know, my, I always, you know, my parents were divorced <clears throat> when we were very young. And hmm. we used to go over to our biological dad's house on weekends. And at night, typically parents come in and they like tuck you in, right? That's like a thing that parents do. Well, hmm. my dad used to come and sit in front of me on the bed and he would have me rub his head because I would just pull energy out. And I didn't know that that's what I was doing. Um, mm. But, you know, I think I equate that with the line. This is what my patients say to me too. You have such a nice touch. And I think what they're feeling is the weight of whatever's been on them that I'm pulling off of them. And I do that mm. through this particular style of touch. But, um, you know, I think that it more was a curse. You know, I really was, um, I was really different from my sister. My sister was always very popular and outgoing and um, uh, ballsy, brassy, you know, right. and I was uh, not, I was scared and I was a bookworm and I, I Were you, felt, are you number one in the birth order? I am. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that kind of explains it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're under and it, it was compounded. It was compounded because my mom got remarried, and then I went from being the older sister slash mother, um, and I had a thing I, I could take care of and you know like watch over my sister. But then when she got married, there were two older siblings there, so I was now a middle child. Which, so she was like the cute one, and I was like the getaway one. And anyway, it sets up a really interesting dynamic when your entire identity is just ripped away from you. Yeah, totally. Which is what it felt like. But I was really, and, and, you know, we moved in the middle of a school year. And so that for a young kid who already doesn't feel um, this, and you know, it's funny you would say this, is I having all these like memories come. I remember in, in the third grade, my teacher pulled my mom in because I had told my mom that nobody liked me. And, um, and the teacher was totally confused because she considered me to be one of the popular kids in the class that everyone seemed to like me. But my feeling was that I could always hear people's thoughts and not that I could hear their thoughts. Like that's like, I'm not like a, but I could, you know, I could always tell when people were saying things about me and, you know, people always say things about people. You're not supposed to know those things. They just, you mm. know, like, like, Ooh, I don't like her shirt, but they just like say it inside. Mm. And so I thought that nobody liked me because I was feeling these feelings that were yes. private feelings that weren't meant for me, but I didn't know that back then. Yeah. But I used to, so I did this horrible thing to myself. I, I thought that because I had this touch that, you know, I could feel things in this touch that it was, I was feeling these things through my hands and I used to slam my fingers in drawers because I thought I could kill the touch. Mm -hmm. and, and it was so interesting um, because I would have these bruises all over my fingers and nobody would ever even notice, you know, not that I wanted them to notice, but maybe secretly I did because then someone could ask me, yeah. why are you doing that? You know, I, I totally relate to it. I, I had, um, um, an issue. Um, um, I was helping a, a child and the child 
was terrible, very, very naughty um, at school. And so I said, okay, just stand in front of this mirror and don't move. Just just stand peacefully and don't move. And then this kid, this kid said, like, what's all the lights around me? Like the child was seeing its aura. And I said, yeah, well, yeah, you're actually, you can see energy. And um, of course, one way of avoiding that would be very, very naughty and always distracting yourself. So like becoming a little bit, um you know adhd yeah? yeah and and uh and i said well you know you you, you need to be you know let's work with this and we'll, you, know, you need to be okay with it and we, i got this uh child with with another child that, that i knew could all, also see auras and an adult friend who also sees auras and we just lined people up and went through and each of them said what they saw and they saw exactly the same thing. So it was just a lovely experience. But I, I feel like uh, children really often don't get that support, do they, from parents? Uh, you know, the child says, I can see this, and, and the parent says, no, you can't, or um, don't be silly, or people, people can't do it. And we all need to belong, don't we? I mean, being abandoned is like the worst experience um, sure. we can have, really. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah. I mean, I can relate to it. I remember um, the weirdest thing. Um, m my brother um, did the weirdest thing, a uh, similar thing. Is he, he older? Was, older, yeah. And mm -hmm. quite highly strung. And uh, he, he went around uh, trying to be nasty for things because he was too nice. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like he, yeah. would, he would deliberately try to be nasty to things because he felt he was too nice and he needed to get, that, get rid of that. You know, he needs yeah. to get rid of love because, um, you know, that, um, well, I won't go into my story. On, but, you know, there was, there was a story behind that. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he thought that wasn't a good thing. So, so um, do you feel, um, I mean, how do you feel like since you had the gateway experience? I mean, obviously, I'm I'm hearing like from a from a a child uh, after that divorce, and then being sensitive with your hands, and actually kind of a self rejection of your ability um, because it it's difficult, yeah. Um, and then you've got this gateway experience where you're opening up to um, a different way of seeing the world. Um, how did that change your life? Did you, did you suddenly, I mean, you were um, going to get married. So what happened there? Did that like, uh, 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 or? Well, I did get married uh, and I did go back to school. And then I ended up raising my, his daughter, um, you know, co-raising, um, which was amazing. Um, oh, lovely. And I put off the pregnancy and then I kept putting off the pregnancy and then I kept putting off the pregnancy. And um, because my, I thought I really did 100% in my own way think I was going to acupuncture school so that I would be able to treat my own children. I never right. saw myself being a healer. I never saw myself ever being a healer the whole time I was in school and wanted to quit this sort of like little image of this little girl that was waiting for me would be there to like be welcoming, you know, like that was what kept me going forward. And, um, she kind of disappeared when I graduated. And I think, it, you know, she was sort of, the, that's what she was for. Like the idea of her was to get me through school, but I, and you know, to jump forward, uh, and I, let's see, I've been in practice, what did I say, 14 years, so 10 years later, I was having an astrology reading, I was just really, I had to just fully reconcile that I had a dream, and this dream was the, you know, like, truly, like, American girl dream of getting married, white picket fence, dog, two kids, husband, you know, like, I had that dream, yep. and, um, and that that was a tr forever and that was still sort of a, a program that was running in my life even though that wasn't even gonna ever be mm. and i was i needed to stop being upset about not having a physical child of my own this lifetime and 
And this mm. astrologer who was amazing, she, she looked at my chart. She said, you were never going to have a child this lifetime. She said, you are the mother to many, not the mother to one. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. And, and it really changed everything for me. It mm. really helped me feel like that I was doing really what I set myself here to do. And, you know, we get wrapped up in that Disney dream when we're kids, of course. That's, mm. you know, that's what else is there. That's what we're fed. Mm. Um, and then you find your own way and you have to make, make do with, with, you know, your dharma. And so it was this, it's this, I'm a healer. I, I find, you know, what has come, comes to me is, um, it's, um, I was just talking the other day to an intelligence officer that was part of the uh, military remote viewing project. And I'm fascinated. I mean, we have the capacity to really go anywhere with our minds and see anything we want to. And I don't know if, if mind is the right word, but I'm fascinated that we're, we have the capacity to keep secrets from ourselves, really. You know, it's, it's sure. like, you know, you're, you're there thinking, I want to do this. And then you spend, yeah, and actually you don't, you know, you don't. Like on another level, you go, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. That was just a story. I was just, I was just living for, for somebody else or living to fit in. Um, and, then, um, and then you have this uh, story of going to acupuncture school. And then this whole like study comes to a, to a focal point of the last weekend where you realize, oh yeah, that was, yeah, that was all you didn't actually need. All that. <laughs> you, you just needed to perceive the energy and, and yeah, it's, it's all, it, it's in the body, it's off the body. It's, you know, it's, it's everywhere really. Um, yeah. Well, it was, you know, it was really cool because when I was in acupuncture school, there were maybe two or three massage therapists that were in class, in my class. And, I used to be so jealous because I said, you can really feel these acupuncture points, can't you? And they're like, what? And I, I, I guess I was already feeling things, but I didn't realize it, but it was very clear to me where the points were. You know, there was a, there was a thing and it would take years and years and years before I could actually tell you what that actually meant. Like, you know, but, but back then I, I could definitely tell there was a thing like, and you would know because you've been working on the body and you can tell the differences between things. And they're like, well, not like that. We were like in muscles. We weren't in energy. And I was like, oh, okay. But yeah. I mean, I've got this, uh, this whole story where I, where I, you know, talk uh, uh, to body workers and body workers are all, you know, there's a few body workers who are all like totally in denial about energy and that's okay. And then they'll put their hands on a, on a body and they'll say, I can feel this it goes up the leg and into the shoulder. And I'll go, no, you can't. Because I, you know, I have a, I have a, you know, my training in, in massage in Germany, and I'm a psychologist, and you can feel what you can feel under your hand. Everything else is energy. You cannot feel outside the body, all the way up to the shoulder, through somebody else's body. It's not possible, unless, of course, you know, we know more. Actually, we know more than we we can prove, which is, you know, I mean, that's generally been the case. Um, have you, I mean, um, I almost feel that you've answered this question, but I felt like, have there been times where you've kind of been ashamed or like trying to hide these abilities? Well, you know, it's, it's funny because actually up until very, very recently, I've been hiding them here. I, my story is like this, right? Mm. And how I got to where I'm sitting right this moment. And it, it it's in its, it's, it's in a really interesting part of the spin right now, but it's, a spiral, basically, isn't it? it's absolutely a spiral. And the, the, I, I came here from Kauai and Hawaii and um, I was on Maui and Kauai and I was so out and I was working with some of the most incredible healers I've ever met in my life. And they actually attuned me to a part of myself. I never ever would have gotten to. I don't think if I hadn't met them, they're my soul, soul friends and family at this point. But, um, and then I came back to this little town in Washington and bought a practice that's mostly seniors. And, um, I moved here because my parents live in this town. Mm. And I was 
I'm the, of the four girls, the only single childless one. And so, and healer for that matter. So it seemed like natural that as they're getting older, I should come and be near them. Mm. <clears throat> and it's beautiful here. I don't want you to think it's not beautiful. My gosh, I am, it is so beautiful. But, you know, here I was, uh, you know, I was in, at, at Lumeria, which is where I worked on Maui. I, my, my title was a shamanic acupuncturist. That's what I was doing. And, um, and then I came back here to be just like a, an acupuncturist, you know, wait, and wait a minute. You, you kind of like, uh, you kind of like sneak that one in like shamanic, shamanic. I was you, shamanic were you, are you a shaman? No, I would say the treatments were shamanic. Oh, okay. Good. All right. I get you. So would you explain what that means to people? I mean, I, I think I get you, but, um, <clears throat> and you know the truth being told I was told that that's what I was doing I wouldn't have called it that I called it energetic acupuncture okay. um, but I think because I, I I really call on guides and spirits and I work a lot with the natural world when I'm when working. when did you start doing this calling on guides and spirits I mean again that's not exactly like standard you know school acupuncture no None of this is really, none of what I do, except for that last weekend is. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> when did that start? You know, I learned a lot of it. Um, when I graduated from acupuncture school, I did study with a shaman. And uh -huh. uh, I had already been playing with tarot cards um, but we, we deepened my practice there and, um, I learned, I learned a, I learned a, this, there's something, I don't, I don't know. Um, I didn't like it. I didn't like what I learned. There was a darkness there. I'm really a creature of light and I'm really attracted to mm -hmm. teachers that bring light. And there was just a lot of darkness and it just repelled me. Um, that was the tarot, but you learn with a shame and, and that was a little bit lighter, was it? No, it's the, it was working with the shaman that felt very dark. She oh, okay. Dark. And it wasn't just her, it was like the people that gravitated towards her, there was just a darkness there. And it's not to say that it was bad. I mean, it just wasn't my cup of tea. It wasn't the way that I perceive energy. I, I, I don't think I have an answer for you about that. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I suppose when, when you've had, if you've had the experience with a shaman who is connecting with spirit, like is supposed to yeah, be a medium, you know, like I'm trying to, if, if I think like a, a shaman for me is like a, a, like a traditional folk medium. She um, was. She was and, incredible. She was incredible. And, you know, she used to always talk about being a hollow bone and, um, you know, that, that that was our job to be hollow so spirit could move through us and, and move us in the ways that spirit wanted to be moved. And, mm. and that's the lesson that I picked up from her. That was the beginning probably right. of my massive growth into this area. But I think I, I started reading a lot and I meditate and then I would sort of channel into these energies and feel what they felt like. And um, I did all of this on my own. And I, I don't think until I got to Maui when I was, when I was working with people that were doing this on like a, like a way higher level than me. Yeah. Did I, did it start to sort of coalesce into something that became, um, knowable? This, this has all been, you know, I think when we were originally talking, I said, my story isn't like a, I didn't have like a sis boom bomb moment. Like I, I've stumbled into everything that, that has happened. I didn't even know I was using, I, the, I was treating my energy healer when I got my degree, I was giving her free treatments. So I could just, I just wanted to get people in the door yeah. and she grabbed my hand at one point and said, Whoa, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean? And she said, <laughs> you're pulling so much energy off me. What are you doing with it? And I said, what do you mean I'm pulling energy off you? Like, you know, I, I, I was called to put my hands in a place. I put my hands in a place. I didn't know what I was doing. I was so thankful to her. She taught me mm. immediately how to ground and she taught me immediately 
how to dump energy that wasn't mine. And, mm. and I, you know, again, everything as it's supposed to be, you know, I needed her there on the table at the very beginning of this to start showing me some things. Um, and then I started working with this teacher that um, ended up not being a great teacher for me, but she, uh, man, did I need her um, when I needed her. And she would mirror back to me without me saying what I was seeing, she would see it much like your friend in the mirror and being with other people that were seeing the same things. And um, the confidence that she gave me that the things that I'm seeing or feeling are real, like I'm not making it up. I thought I was always making things up. They always, my parents always used to say, you're so creative. And, and I thought that meant I'm making it up. Mm -hmm. but really, I'm really have always been this hollow bone. And that just resonated and is essentially it is how I feel. I'm a hollow mm. bone. And we've got a rather powerful rainstorm here, so I don't know how it sounds, but um, I hope it's okay. okay. Can you can you hear it? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, can I mean, me? I I totally love it when the when there's a heavy rainstorm. I feel it's that release, and I feel like um, you know bringing that round and and uh, using that as a um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, well, the, the the Germans say a um, a donkey bridge. Um, so it's um, I feel like um, this Chinese concept of Wu Wei, which is letting go and um, going, yeah, Shun Qi Zan, which means to go to fl follow, just to follow, allow yourself to let the natural process unfold. Yeah. Um, is sort of similar, like you've, 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 you've come at it from different directions. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Have you had some, I mean, I, I, I guess you've had some people who've come with some pretty serious problems and you've, you've been able to help them. Have you had some where you've gone, wow, that was amazing that you could tell us about? You know, I'm going to tell you about my own. Um, yes, that's true. I have for many patients, but I have had um, Hashimoto for, which is an autoimmune thyroid condition. Yes. 10 years. And um, I have an interesting case because my thyroid is actually low normal, which means it can't be treated. There's, there, it's, not, it's not low enough to be treated. So I have all the symptoms of um, having hypothyroidism but it can't be treated. And so we're talking insomnia, low energy, dry skin, mm. thinning mm. hair, um, forgetfulness, <laughs> forgetfulness, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and a host of other, a host of other things, just autoimmune, ick, you know, feelings. And um, a friend recommended a book to me, which I bought and had on my shelf for six years, never looked at. And you know how sometimes books just fall off the shelf that ever happened to you? Yeah. Um, yeah, not not. I think it might have happened once, but I, I've heard of it more than once. Well, I was cleaning my office at work, and this book just jumped off the shelf, and I was like, "Oh, I remember that book!" And I picked it up, and I opened exactly to the page about um, Hashimoto and how um, Hashimoto is all of the bad things you say about yourself. It's this all the self-hating, self-sabotage, oh. and um, and I, I mean, and it was like, what you know? It just like, it was like what just happened? Oh. And so, as luck would have it, I had just gotten a blood draw maybe three months earlier, and my and I, I forget the name of the marker, but the the autoimmune marker had like quadrupled, and so my autoimmune numbers had gotten so bad that it was it was. I, I was scared. I mean, it just, it, it looked bad for me. And I mm. thought, okay, all right, all right. And I had tried, trust me, every diet that they said, I tried every single thing and no one had ever said to me, stop like pointing at yourself and saying nasty things. And so yeah. for a year, I made a commitment to myself because I was going to have to get a blood draw in a year that I was going to catch all of those thoughts. And anytime I said anything, I would say five to 10 things in the opposite direction. Oh. And I did that for a year and it, it took a long time to catch all of the thoughts, you know, mm. but the, the big ones um, I would catch right away. Mm. And so I, about 
five months ago had that blood draw again and my autoimmune numbers shrank to maybe a quarter. So, I mean, I, I can't remember that, but I mean, it was so drastic that, that I had to like look at the other numbers and I was like, oh my God, all I did was stop saying bad things about myself mm. to myself. That was it. That was it. And so I, I love it. I love it. I, I, I mean, nobody could have told me that that's possible. I, I have actual like numbers proof of, on these pieces of paper. Right. And you know what I love about it is, you know, um, your background, a little bit like my background is, is very much sort of this physical energy. And then you've, you just, well, okay, if I, this thought, I mean, thoughts are, of course, they're energy. If I just change the way I think, or I start to uh, produce some thoughts in a different direction, then I'm going to have effect on, on my energy. And then that, that has a knock-on effect to, to my chemistry and then my physiology and so on. So... Very, very cool. That's amazing. Um, do you, I, I got a question that's come. So I've been channeling a question that's come into me. Have you done any distance work? Because like very much that's something in my experience uh, with energy is doing um, the, the, the Chinese, uh, according to my teacher would say in the Qi world, uh, time and space have a different, um, um, they run under different rules. And if you don't want to talk about this, yeah, if you feel it's a bit too out there, a bit too woo woo, then you don't have to. But um, have you had any experience? Oh, nothing too woo woo for me at this point. Okay. <laughs> I live in Hawaii. Like there is nothing more woo woo that could come at me after living. I want to go. I want to go at some point. I've just got to go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I definitely do virtual work and, um, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. And like I said, I was shut down for six weeks completely. And I, not only did I find, I just like, I just want to caress this book. Not only did I find this book that is obviously my future. Um, but oh I, I also decided that I never really needed, uh, or better yet had the time to put into creating um, virtual treatments. And I have all these signature treatments that I love doing. And I put them up on my website and created a whole other side to my website that was just virtual treatments. And, um, and they're so fun. You know, there's a treatment I do in my office that I, that's called intuitive mirroring, where I sit across from somebody and it's, you know, you're an actual therapist and I play one on TV, but, um, but it is one of my one of my specialties because I have so much clear audience. So when somebody speaks, I can hear the subtext of that. And um, and as a therapist, I think you don't have the luxury of parroting back what you're the silent things that you're hearing from somebody probably. But because I am not a therapist and people are coming to me for healing in a different way, um, I get to get very, very direct very quickly with people and get like zoomed to the root of things. But then I can do energy medicine or acupuncture and release the core of whatever is wound there in the energetic system. And we can just, we can just clear the whole 360 of this thing. Amazing. And it's so rad. I love these treatments. And so I'd always done it in person, you know, like, like one on one. And I thought, well, wait a minute. I mean, if I have zoom, everybody's doing zoom now, I can just, look you know into the thing here and have the same thing and i thought well i mean i'm still gonna hear it it's clear audience like it's not like i have to be in front of somebody it's already not here you know yeah. so um time and space doing... we we think we're actually i think i can actually see you but i am actually looking at my computer screen and so are you yeah. Do you know what i mean like uh, but 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 our consciousness has said yeah that's fine distance doesn't matter time doesn't matter Kind of amazing yeah yeah and and i i love it we're, we're playing in these in these more and more of these quantum fields and it's it's so fascinating i yeah. have to jump in i'm not i'm not a psychotherapist oh i just studied psychology um oh, so i'm i'm a i'm an energy healer much more than anything else and i'm a body worker okay so well, um I, I i'm somebody's gonna write in and say they've got you know they need psychotherapy for me and i go well and believe more in it uh, I, I think psychotherapy is a kind of energy work, like everything is a kind of energy work from my perspective. But when I've had really great difficulties, 
I've gone to the energy workers because I, I think it's faster and I'm not, I don't have um, a block in my mind about it being too weird because like I've had already <laughs> the weirdest things happen to me, which is why I wanted to share other people's stories, honestly. Well, you know, and I've actually, so my biological father is a therapist and I've had oh. a ton of therapy and um, I never felt healed by that. In fact, I think I felt more injured by that because it would bring up these very painful things. And then they, they say, okay, your time's up. And I, I didn't find that the least bit valuable. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, I, I suppose find it, uh, there was also like this psycho psychoanalysis, which was like the Freudian way, which is, which oh. if you speak oh. to anybody, they say, well, it's like going to hell, basically. Yeah, you, and, and I'm talking to somebody that did their their doctorate in in it, and they said, "Yeah, well, if you're going to start it, you're going to go to hell. You do come out of hell eventually, but it's like ten years of going to hell." And I'm like, "Well, why would I do that? There's some shortcuts, yeah." Um, so. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's not to say. I mean, I think a lot of people probably get a lot of value because they just need to talk. To somebody but hmm. I think for me uh, personally and the work that I do I can get to 10 years of therapy in one session just because um, yeah. we don't have to talk about that like that already happened you don't have to you don't have to relive that you just have to understand why it happened that's what you need to understand right. and when you understand that and can move through that then it's done you did it hmm. congratulations hmm. you get to move on hmm. oh, that's, that's been my that. experience that's nice. yeah i think i can confirm um obviously like um like you know my one of the reasons i'm doing this podcast is because i want to open people up to other options i'm not trying to close options just say okay well, you can do this therapy if you feel comfortable you might try something else which it may well like right now it may save you a lot of money and a lot of time um and and here's some here's some here's some people's experiences you know, here's their stories. But if you, I feel like also we've got the problem that, you know, how do you find somebody? Like if, if you're Joe Public or, or Joanne Public and you want to find somebody like you, I want to find somebody like you. I mean, how do I go about finding somebody like you? What, what's your advice? Um, I, I have a couple of ways that I do it personally. I always take recommendations from um, people obviously that I trust that have had sessions, but I like, I, I might be a bit old school, but, and, and it's because I put so much time into my website. I look at what people write. Um, and I actually look at what their clients say about them. And I, I get a feeling off that of it's whether it's someone that I want to work with or not. Mm. And that, that generally works for me. I have a, I have a funny story actually. Okay. Um, I love stories. Okay, this story started five years ago. Five years ago, I wanted, um, I wanted to, I started studying Akashic Records and, uh, okay, so I started studying them and I, I wanted to have a reading to see how, um, how people were doing readings in this can, way. Can you tell people what are Akashic Records? Just your, your Akashic Records are sort of this, this space in the, let's call it the cloud, the real cloud, where mm. all of your lifetime records are kept. And, um, and you can kind of filter through them and you can see themes and you can kind of clean things up. And um, it, they're, they're a pretty remarkable system. I use them daily for everything. They're very handy. Uh, but I was a kid that loved encyclopedias, so I like lots of information. <laughs> mm, mm, yeah, sure. Um, so I found this woman. I did exactly like what I'm saying to you. I, I looked up all the different people that were doing Akashic readings. And, and actually, I wanted to, to, to use the man that of the book I had just read, but he wasn't doing sessions anymore. And so I, I started searching around, and I found this woman, and I, I called her up and made a session. And I had one question and one question only, which is, am I supposed to have a partner this lifetime? Because I feel like I am, but it, I don't. And I thought, if I'm not supposed to, I can turn off the spigot. Like I could just turn that off and mm. be done. Mm. Um, but if I need to keep it open, I will, 
but I don't want to if I don't need to. Like, I'd like to just be done if I need to be done. Isn't it kind of a funny way of thinking, though? I mean, I, I think it's kind of cute. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, we're turning it off. <laughs> I would have so much more energy available for other things if oh. I wasn't, you know, if I didn't have that, like, sonar, like, running around. So many people the would, wouldn't they, as well, yeah. Oh, God. Like, Tinder would go broke, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, so anyway... She's doing this reading for me, and she says, um, I can't tell you that, but what I can tell you is you need to take Shizandra. Shizandra is a Western herb, and Chinese medicine is Wuweitsa, and Wuweitsa is not an herb that I need to take. Like, that's not an herb that, that I would need to take. So I was like, what are you talking about? So I ignored it, of course, because I'm like, God damn it. Like, all I wanted was an answer to a question. She's in my records. She could go, like, find out, you know. No, she couldn't find out. All right. right. So let's fast forward five years. It's, oh, no, I'm sorry. One year. One year later, I start doing heavy metal tests in my office. It's hair samples. And you get. And so I did mine, and it came back, and it said that I had aluminum toxicity. Okay. So I um, did nothing. I thought, oh, okay, maybe because I warm things up with aluminum foil in the oven sometimes, I'll stop doing that. That's, that's all the attention that I gave it. Okay. Okay. So now fast forward four more years and I was just on Maui and um, uh, I went back to my favorite chiropractor who's a kinesiologist. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've been having thoracic outlet syndrome, which is this very painful condition because I'm bent over all day, all day, all Mm. day, all day, all day. So um, I said to him, oh, I'm so glad you could fit me in. I have thoracic outlet syndrome. I was hoping that you'd be able to tell me what is going on and how I can fix this. So he's doing all these tests on me and he says, you don't have thoracic outlet syndrome. And I said, I don't, he said, you don't. And he starts doing all these other tests and he says, ah, he says, um, you uh, have uh, aluminum toxicity. And I started laughing and I said, yeah, that's right. I do, I, I didn't do anything, <laughs> you're right. I was like, well, what do I do about that? And he said, he did a few more things and he says, you have to take Shizandra. like what and he said yeah and I said that's impossible and he said why and I said nothing I said well you know I'm also really perimenopausal um maybe since you're in my field you can tell me is there something that I should be taking for that and he tested me starts laughing and he said Shazandra <laughs> and I said what he said that's odd I don't usually get the same thing for two complete, completely different situations and I was mm. like Do you have any? I'll buy some right now. So I bought some and, and, and I don't know how to explain this, but Mm. for about three months prior to this trip, I had started treating this man who was referred by one of my dearest patients. And when I got back from my vacation, something had changed and he like something had like kindled. So I'm taking the Shizandra and it turns out that he's my partner. Like he is it, like I'm done for life. Like I just met the guy that's the man that's my entire list that I've been waiting for for my entire world. And I, I just sat there and I was like, is it the, Shiz- is it yeah. the Shizandra? <laughs> like this is so crazy. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I think I'm gonna take the Shizandra for the rest of my life. But yeah. um, uh, I, I learned a lesson in that I was drawn to this woman for a reason. She did have the answer for me. I, you know, it it turns out that five years ago, he was still married. So he, you know, it wasn't going to be time. It was spirit Mm. setting up this eventuality where I would absolutely take the Shizandra when he, someone else told me to take the Shizandra, you know, but, um, but I love that story and the synchronicity of it. And I have to tell you, that's how my whole life works. Like everything is this, I mean, it's just this, ugh. I, I got a, I got a similar story. It's not, it's not from, um, from me it's from somebody i interviewed and, and they they were they had some some energy healing or energy reading and the person said oh you're from ishtar and and um you you uh, you kind of your your soul g- jumped off you kind of jumped off the ship that was passing the earth and you're you're kind of like um, an alien on earth Anyway, so she's like, okay, she's really young. And she's like, this is like nuts. Yeah, I don't believe any of this. It's it's like a tarot reading. And it's like the first time she's ever had it. And she's like, yeah, 
just tell me a story. 10 years later, she's at some conference or somebody else. And this woman walks up to her and says, hi, I remember you. We were on the ship from Ishtar together. <laughs> and I was like, woo. And um, yeah, I mean, that I, I just go, I mean, it's t a totally different person. She said, yeah, you, you jumped off the ship. I, we, we were in a team together and you jumped off. Yeah. I'm like, okay and i can't i can't place it anywhere i don't i don't know how to place that in my belief systems but i think the nice thing is we don't we can just say okay maybe it's a metaphor um uh, and um yeah and i have a similar experience with being told to take a herb and just suddenly like it was somebody who energetically said oh yeah i just get this this herb comes into my mind you need to take it and uh, it was rhodiola actually and my, my, my brain switched on. I was suffering from grief, and it was about three years. And then I took rhodiola, and like, I think it's for like emotional trauma and mental trauma. And it was it's like, yeah, it was amazing. It was, it was energetic, but I'd done all the energy work, but I needed, I needed something which was, I don't know, like a, a, a marble, you know, in the clicker barn, you know. Um, so yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Um, I, I think I could probably um, get anecdotes out of you all day, don't, don't you think? You have. I think, I think <laughs> you've got... A fire jar full over here. Exactly, exactly. And there's more anecdotes coming up. I think I'd like to um, invite you back at some point later and, and we, can, we can pick up your latest anecdotes and we can hear what's going on with your your development oh God, with this, this book that's coming up. And I'm fascinated by the virtual uh, channel. Um, my teacher, he would do something, he would acupuncture the weather. That was one of the things he did. So you just, just in case you ever think about doing that. Um, and one of the things he did was, uh, he did uh, spirit needles. So he did needles that weren't physically present and um well that's that, what i've been doing with these virtual treatments i thought what do i, I mean acupuncture is energy medicine i don't need a needle and so on these virtual treatments when i'm doing the energy medicine and there's a point that needs to be needled i just put a needle in it like i don't what do i need like a there done like that's the needle yeah i mean because i actually had someone just yesterday say wow, what did you just do? I feel this energy running down my leg. And I was like, yeah, I just put in a needle. <laughs> it's so cool. I love right. that. Oh, cool. Well, you, you may be, um, I, I'm looking forward to hearing more reports about all that. That sounds really interesting. Amazing. Look, I, how can people get hold of you if they wanted a virtual treatment? Like, um, I mean, I guess you, you, you probably prefer them physically. I, I don't know. Or do you, it doesn't matter. No, I, mean, I love it. I've got it. Listen, one of my favorite, favorite ways to play with energy is actually, you said like play with Tarot, but playing with Tarot and um, they're Oracle cards for me and they speak to me. And just like I did with acupuncture, I had to dump everything I learned about the cards. So now that I am like this hollow bone with the cards and I throw them, they just tell me this story and it is so beautiful. So you, you throw your cards. Like, you, you physically well, throw the cards. Well, I mean, that's what it's called. You like throw the cards out. Like that's the. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I oh, have I mean, the I picture like of you going wait, wait. <laughs> like okay. One's landed over by the the TV, and one's <laughs> well, the dogs. The one's right landed right. in the dog's ear. Ooh, poor dog. Oh. No, but I mean, I created all these treatments with these tarot cards for people to have specific. Like, if people have a thing, like I have a, a chakra spread, right? So. I can put the cards for each of the chakras and then I can do the energy healing based on the story that the card is telling me, which is really fun. Brilliant. It's actually one of my favorite ways. Amazing. So anyway, they're all on my website. They're all, I have them all written up and they're all their own story. And, uh, okay. What's the, what's the domain? Uh, what's the, what's the, uh, domain name? It's the Alicia Weinberg.com. Alicia Weinberg.com. It can be easier. It can be simpler people. Get, get there, change your paradigm, yeah? Get your, get your tarot chakras aligned and sorted 
And that and is, I, you, you're making a joke, but it is so awesome. And it's I, so I'm fun. not joking. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a little bit in my uh, persona of radio show host of like, yeah, <laughs> get on down. But I mean, I'm not, I mean, I am, I, I have, you know, ever since like I'm 24 and, and grandmaster, he raised up his hand and I had a tummy ache and my hat and my stomach just went cold and I just had no pain immediately. It was like it was just pouring out of me. I was like, "Oh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm on, I'm on this journey." And I, I, I that was my um, gateway experience. And and so, you know, I, some sometimes I feel like people they don't have it. They don't have what the Chinese call kung fu. They don't have the power. They can talk it, but they don't have it. And I'm, I'm, I, you've got it. You got it. So. I'm just thrilled and I totally like you'll find your own creative natural ways to to access it and it's it's lovely so so I'm really Thank sorry you. if I if, if you thought I was no, in, in no, any no, way just, belittling it I do no, not no not at all amazing so my people come come and find Elisha Weinberg at elishaweinberg.com and get get some virtual treatments and like tell your friends yeah and remember where you heard it on discover energy work and go and visit our website where we can put up some things about that as well. I think that was a brilliant interview. Oh, Lisa. good. I'm glad. I really do. Um, I'm going to stop recording. Yeah, me too.